Kyle Mohan Racing, KMR. We're at the shop. I was lucky enough to stop by Mazda Tricks, grab one of the old dyno charts from the Mazda Tricks Hybrid Renesis RX-8 that I helped build. And we also did a Moto IQ feature on back in 2012. After talking with Dave a little bit about the car and continuing to work on my KMR hybrid setup, I wanted to give some updates on both the project and answer a few questions about the horsepower gains, the setup, and what you can expect if you're building a setup similar to the one we're talking about right here. All right, we're going to wrap into it. So we've been working on the hybrid setup. We have got our rotors prepped, two millimeter deepened to RX-7 apex seal grooves. So we took those factory two millimeter short or shallow apex seal grooves and were able to cut them down to a full height RX-7 seal. Everything else is staying traditional. We'll just end up running a uh, normal RX-7 corner seal in there. Went for some race bearings, side cut, balanced by Mazda Tricks. Street port on our side plates, as well as a KMR street port on the exhaust with GSLSE rotor housings, RX-8 shaft, RX-8 gears, polished up some fresh bearings, and just opened up the oil passages a little bit. Just some basic prep work, really any performance rotary should have done. But with the Renesis, there will be more steps, especially if you're aiming towards boost. I recommend studying these blocks. When we built the motor at Mazda Tricks, which is the graph we're talking about right here, we built that motor with boost in mind. So the motor was prepped very similarly to this, but with one of the biggest differences being it was a fully studded block. Half inch studs through every one of those te tension bolt holes precisely fit. If you check out some of my other videos, you might see me talking about it. We're going to cover it a little bit in this build later on, but it was a studded block. Basically, everything else was prepped just like this, a street port, RX-8 rotors, side cut, 2 millimeter RX-7 seals. And what we ended up getting after some tuning and with some work, and we'll cover what that tuning and work was, was right around 435 horsepower, and we ended up bouncing between, I think it was about 415 and 440, depending on class rules, and we never really ran over 14 pounds of boost. We ended up tuning the car in at about 10 to 12 pounds of boost for reliability, fuel consumption, and class horsepower rules. The car did very well. It won its West Coast Championship. We never had any issues with the motor. It ran the entire season. That motor ended up getting sold to a customer, and the Vargas Brothers ended up buying all the intake manifolding. But this is that dyno chart right here, and I think one of the best aspects of it is even with a T4 bushing turbo pushing around 12 to 14 pounds of boost on 100 octane gas, it was not an ethanol motor, we were getting up into the 400 horsepower plus range right in that 6,500 to 7,000 RPM range. And we were continuing to hold that peak, so you can see that Really, as far as the volume flow of the motor and the efficiency of it, you're going to have a lot of drivability in what I would consider your, your mid-RPM range getting quite strong and holding a pretty strong torque curve. I think it'd be interesting to overlay this uh, with a modern turbo, um, some modern tuning and... Uh, you know, maybe uh, ethanol, because I think you're going to come up with more horsepower and, and definitely more torque with the increased timing you can run with higher octane. But I think when you're looking at horsepower numbers per boost volume, I compare this in efficiency to other available turbocharged rotary combinations. And, and I'd like to say that what I think here is, is, you know, the Renesis was never intended to be turbocharged. So to be able to create a package that works with turbocharging with the Renesis um, has efficiency, has the ability to last um, under performance conditions, I think is a great thing for the Renesis because we all look at this motor and we wonder what can we do with it? How can we make power? How can we make it reliable? Well, here was a very successful uh, package that we put together 
and raced. And you can see how it worked right there. It did well. As in regards to the manifolding, and I think we get asked that a lot, um, we didn't run the valving. It was a stock lower half manifold that was ported and an upper half uh, that was a Pettit Racing aluminum uh, casting from one of their supercharger kits, but we ran it uh, without their kit. Obviously, we got a hold of one. So that eliminated all of the OEM valving. Now, when people talk to me about naturally aspirated applications, um, I don't know if you would want that OEM Renesis valving or not because I haven't personally tried it, but I do know of people running naturally aspirated hybrid motors in Australia and in some other continents, and all of the people running them describe fantastic running motors that sound good, achieve their goals, and perform fantastic. Nobody is having reliability issues as long as they're taking care of the apex seal issue as it has to travel over that traditional port. The beam strength just isn't there, and I think that might have been one of the big issues. Another question I get a lot is, uh, will it work with an OEM ECU? And you know, I just don't know. Mazda ECUs are not known for their flexibility. So in most cases, when I recommend uh, performance rotary builds, one of the first things I recommend is, hey, get a new cell phone. No, I'm joking, not a new cell phone. Get a new ECU for your car. Um, they're really not that expensive when you talk about the thousands of dollars you put into the motor. Um, I like Haltex, but something that allows you timing and fuel adjustability for a performance build, especially if this motor's not going in an RX-8, if it's going in a hot rod, an RX-7, uh, some off-road purpose car, race car, then there's really no reason you would need to use that OEM RX-8 ECU, which has a lot of just restrictions and constrictions to it. Um, the tunability is not the easiest and the flexibility is not the greatest when you talk about ECUs. So my personal feeling is, is if you're building a hybrid and obviously if you're going uh, boosted, then yes, you will be going standalone ECU and you will enjoy your life immensely because you'll be able to run, tune, boost, and stay reliable provided you make all those right choices. Um, so, you know, those are some of the things we got asked, uh, you know, what have we done to the intake? Yes, it was a modified intake on this particular build. Um, yes, it was a standalone ECU. It was a T4 non-bearing turbo. So we're talking about a pretty old turbo and this all happened. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't really see the date, but 2012, uh, was when that dyno chart was from, and so this car was running from about 2012 to 2014. So all things considered, I think, you know, rotary engines have come a long way since 2012. Uh, our available knowledge as a community is a lot greater. I think the opportunity for the re Renesis at this point is really great. Uh, if you're boosting, stud the motor. We're going to be covering that soon. Um, if you're running naturally aspirated, then this is kind of a good configuration I think you could start with. Um, and for me, personally, I would look to aftermarket ECUs, aftermarket intakes to get the most out of this setup. And anybody who's done anything with any OEM setups, I'd love to hear feedback back on that. And uh, continuing to say that I do know outside of our motor package that we did at Mazda Tricks, I know about three or four other people around the world running hybrid successfully. And we've got a couple customers here in the U.S. working on setups. So everybody out there, stay excited, stay brapping. We're getting ready to start the Formula Drift season. We've got some great content coming up, more builds, more team projects. I'm starting new stuff. It's going to be fun. There's a lot of stuff going. So you know how I usually end them. I got to brap on out of here. Um, you know, these are fun setups. For me, this is, I, I say it, this is a hot rod setup. This is a race car setup. It's an off-highway use setup. Um, but anybody out there doing stuff with them, I love to see it in the comments. I think these are a horsepower-making rotary. There's a lot of volume here. Modern turbos, modern ECUs, this could be one of the more efficient or higher horsepower making motor combinations in 13B configuration that's out there. We just don't know, but I think we're going to find out a lot more soon. And with that, brap, brap, I'm out. Talk to everybody soon. Comment, stay tuned. Rotary.